at the same time, my mothers and sisters, there is another way Allah tests. And what is that? By giving you another child. Oh, so how is that a test of the same gender? Subhanallah. So now there's a new problem. What's the problem? I have a child, but that child is the same gender as the previous one. So oh. <laughs> people are not happy. Allah says in the Quran, amazingly, that He creates as He wishes. Lillahi mulku samawati wal ardi yakhluku ma yasha. يَهَبُ لِمَن يَشَاءُ إِنَاثًا وَيَهَبُ لِمَن يَشَاءُ الذُّكُورَ أَوْ يُزَوِّجُهُمْ ذُكْرَانًا وَإِنَاثًا وَيَجْعَلُ مَن يَشَاءُ عَقِيمًا Allah to him belongs everything on earth and in heaven for him is the ownership of what is in the skies and on earth. He creates as he wishes. He gives whomsoever he wishes, only females. And he gives whomsoever he wishes, only males. And he gives whomsoever he wishes, both male and female. And for some whom he desires not to give offspring, he will give neither male nor female. That's Allah. That's his plan. So you have one child, you are happy. You have another child, if it's the same gender, you are sad. That's what happens. That is the test of Allah. Do not be sad. I want to inform you of a major sin. A major sin is to become upset at the gender of the child that you have been bestowed with. Especially if it is a female. Why especially if it is a female? Because that is expressly mentioned in the Quran. The kuffar at the time of the Prophet wasallam, just the pre-Islamic era, those kuffar, they had a major issue. What was the issue? They only wanted males. I think this is creeping in to society today again. And it has been rearing its ugly head now and again. People only want males. Female, in some countries they will abort. The moment they find out it's a female. Because they become upset. And for this reason, many verses have been revealed. Take a look at Surat Kuwirat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how those who used to bury their daughters alive, there was a pagan habit that as soon as a child was born, at that time there was no ultrasound to figure it out, otherwise they would have dealt with it earlier. As soon as they figured out or they saw the child is born female, the father would take the child, dig a pit, bury the child alive, forget about it and carry on. What happens to the child? I'm not bothered. I don't want a female. That's how bad it was. And when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, he made it clear that daughters are special. Very clear. He made it very clear that if you get upset when you are informed of the fact that Allah's bestowed you with the gift of a child being a female, then you've engaged in a major sin just by becoming upset. So be careful. Allah says, وَإِذَا الْمَوْءُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيْذًا بِنْقُتِلَتْ When the girl child who was buried alive will be asked on that day of judgment, why? What was the sin for which you were killed? Who will have to reply? Those who killed her. So this is a beautiful teaching. One might say, how does it apply to us? We don't kill our children. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about something even more interesting regarding the kuffar. وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَىٰ ظَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدَّهُ وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ يَتَوَارَى مِنَ الْقَوْمِ مِنْ سُوءِ مَا بُشِّرَ بِهِ 
when one of them was informed of a female child, he would hide his head. In fact, he would become upset. His face would become blackened. And he would become angry when he was informed of a female child. He would hide from community and from people because of the evil news that he got. So from this we learn that if you are a believer, male or female, you will not consider it evil news. It's a blessing. Every man out there who is successful in one way or another, who has been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or another, has come to the earth through a female, subhanallah, has been looked after and nurtured by a female. The same female that we are speaking about here, that those people used to get upset when they were informed, you have a female child. Imagine if all of the females were eradicated. To begin with, I wouldn't be talking here. But at the same time, it would create disaster. Allah alone knows why He does what He does. So be happy when you have been told, you know what? You've only got females. So in order to put an end to this pagan belief, so many rules and regulations came into play. One of them was the manifestation of the mercy of Allah when you've been given the gift of a daughter. Why is she, is she so special? Well, let me tell you. She was downtrodden at one stage. She was looked down upon in the pre-Islamic era. She was made to perform nude in the presence of those who had wealth. This was at the time of the pre-Islamic age. She was treated like a commodity to be bought and sold. Life was imposed on her in terms of decision. Where you get married and what you do, it wasn't even necessarily marriage. It was abuse at times. So what Islam did is, it came in and governed and started saying, amazingly and uniquely, you shall not treat your girl child like this. Starting from the news that she's a girl child, you need to be happy. Thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, you have, you have granted us barakah in our home. You have granted us blessing in our home. That's the girl child, subhanAllah, a blessing. What a big blessing. She will come with her own sustenance she has come with her own destiny and on top of that she has come as a means of entry into paradise for those who take care of her subhanallah she has come as a means of entry to paradise for those who take care of her so islam says it is prohibited to make a woman parade nude for the men prohibited let her cover herself so that she is respected. She is not judged based on whether she has thick hair or sparse hair or for, for example, maybe a receding hairline. She's not judged because of that. She's not judged because she weighs 40 kilos or 60. She is not judged because she is tall or short. She is not judged by the fact that she might be dark in complexion or fair. She is not judged by the fact that she may have not been, for example, of the size of feet that someone decided was ideal. I was shocked to know that in some cultures, if you have a certain size of foot, they don't want to marry you. Too big la. Have you heard that? <laughs> cannot marry, cannot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. It is a reality. Islam says this is pagan. You cannot do that. You judge her by her dedication to Allah. And we will get to this in a few moments. And when I say you judge her by her dedication to Allah, meaning when you want to get married or for example, there is reason to say, I'd like to know how this person is. You know, people say, don't judge me. Yes, we understand. I also believe we shouldn't be judging people with the wrong judgments for the wrong reasons unnecessarily. But we're allowed to guide and advise, aren't we? So let's not hide behind the statement, don't judge me, in order to run away from advice 